good morning to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you all to the funeral service of our dear sister, Dr. Doris Daba. We pray that the good Lord will be with the family and uphold them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, the head of our national church is there. The most reverend Dr. Henry Ndukuba, Archbishop, Metropolitan and Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Papa, you are welcome, sir. Also with him today, we have the right reverend Dr. Emmanuel Adekunle, Bishop of Egba Diocese. The right reverend Dr. James Odedeji, Bishop of Lagos West. And the right reverend Oluronti Odubogun, retired Bishop of Ife. You are all welcome. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Papa, the former primate, Papa Peter Akiola is here as well. You are welcome, Daddy. God bless you, sir. The congregation, please face the west door. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister, Doris, let us pray with confidence in God, the giver of life, who has promised to raise the faithful to perfection in the company of the saints. I have set God always before me, for he is at my right hand. Therefore, I shall not fall. For why thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Rest eternal grant unto the faithful, O Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting hands. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the light on them, nor any eat. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this hand Christ died and lived again that he may be the Lord both of the dead and of the living. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. 
Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see the Lord, whom I shall see for myself, and not as a stranger. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Blessed are the dead in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit, for they shall rest from all their labors. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed are those who mourn. God will comfort them.
we turn to page 8, item 5. Thou, O God, are praised in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed in Jerusalem. Thou that hearest the prayer unto thee shall all flesh come. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We come before your divine majesty, dear Father, who is both Lord and Master of all. We thank you that for each of us, you have set times and seasons, times to be born and times to report back to you. We thank you for our sister, Doris, with whom we had the privilege of interacting on this earth for many decades. As you have recalled her, give us who remain the grace to so order our lives that when it comes to our turn, you will receive us into your kingdom. Thank you, Father, as we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please sit. The first lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Our brothers, we want you to know the truth about those who died, so that you'll not be sad as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus those who have died believing in him. What we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive on the day the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be the shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who will have died believing in Christ will rise to live first. Then we who are living at the time will be gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then encourage one another with these words. This is the word of God.
miss it. The second lesson, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as quoted by St. John, chapter 14, I start to read from the first verse. John 14, from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you? And yet, has I not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how said thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of God. Lord be with you. Please let us take the intercession on page 13. Almighty God, who had bound together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the body of your Son Jesus Christ, grant, we pray you, to your old church in paradise and on earth, your light and your peace. Amen. Grant that all those who have been cleansed by the death and resurrection of Christ may die to sin and rise to newness of life. And through your grace, we may pass through the gate of death to your joyful resurrection. Amen. Grant to us who are still in your pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Amen. Grant to your people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins 
and serve you with a quiet mind. Amen. Grant to those who mourn, especially Doris's family, particularly Larry, Deji, and the grandchildren, a sure confidence in your fatherly care, that casting all their grief on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Amen. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Doris into your unfailing love, receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor which you have promised to your children. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of you, we may grow from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in this life and later in your heavenly kingdom. Amen.
us pray. Gracious and merciful Father, we invite you to hallow and honor our gathering this morning as we bid farewell to our departed sister, Doris, now lying in the casket before us. May we be guided and enabled in all that shall transpire by the wholesomeness of your truth, love, and empathy. Minister your grace generously as you speak your word of peace into our hearts, particularly to the family and the extended matrix of interface hitherto maintained by the departed, rekindling hope and trust in the divine Godhead. We beseech thee, Lord, to grant unto us all beauty instead of ashes. Pour upon our heavy hearts your oil of joy and cloak us all with your garment of praise. We offer this prayer through the merits of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please sit. I bid you welcome to this solemn service for the celebration of life, life lived to the fullest. And as we reflect on this life and times, we must always remember that there is one caution in the indelible words of Hebrews 9.27, which says, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. King Solomon, in his time, was imbued with great wisdom. And he wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every walk into judgment with every sacred thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The thanks be to God as Hebrews 9.28 tells us. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him Looking for him has to be consistent. They shall appear, then he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So 
Psalm 90 is a very instructive and deep spiritual nurture. And King David, the writer of that psalm, made strenuous plea for men, that is me and you. And although also he made a prayer as well. Verse 12 of Psalm 90 tells us, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Whilst verse 13 tells us, Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. And then finally in verse 17, a prayer is offered. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. God answered this prayer contained in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This fact Jesus himself affirms in John 14 verses 1 to 6 which has been read to us this morning. It is only Jesus that can intervene in our mortal life and transform us into the incorruptibility that we have to be. But the question is, do you know this Jesus? And if you do, does he know you? Do you have a subsisting relationship with him? If the answer is yes, then you have invested rightly in your belief and trust in him. Because Eternal profit is yours. He will be waiting to receive you and apportion to you your rightful inheritance in eternity. John tells us in Revelation 3 verse 20 that Jesus is beckoning to us always here I am. 
I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Beloved in the Lord, if you hear his voice, even today as you are seated in this funeral service, Harden not your heart. For Paul exhausts us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, as follows. We then as workers together, together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he says, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Why not invite this Jesus Christ anew today as well as as afresh as we take this song into my life come in to my life come in to my life Lord definitive step of faith as you massage that belief and trust in Christ Jesus. Scripture tells us that it is better to be in the house of mourning than somewhere else. One of the ways in which the Lord enables us, enables us all of our lives and gives us an opportunity so that it 
will never be made for us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, your message has gone forth. Father, let it germinate and grow and bring food fruit in multitudes. As we have prayed in Jesus' name. And now unto him eternal be all honor, glory, dominion, power and majesty now and forevermore. We will listen to the choir anthem as being permitted by our dear primate. The anthem will be taken and the seed of faith will be taken as well. The seed of faith envelope is in a pamphlet and this seed of faith is used for evangelism to take good care of our priests that have retired in this diocese and other dioceses and to take good care of many of our dioceses in the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. And we pray for you that the good Lord will provide all your needs according to his riches in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not lack in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that your jar of oil will never be spent. And whatever you do for living, goodness and mercy will follow you. You will flourish. You will prosper. And you will blossom in the name of Jesus Christ. Last night I lay all sleeping, there came my dreams of fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple day. I heard the children singing, and ever has the song. Me taught the voice of angels from Hebrew and Sarah. Me taught of the voice of angels 
We are not mourning. We are celebrating Christ in the life of our dear sister Doris, who has left us to the great beyond. It can be better than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. With the permission of our dear Father in the Lord, the primate of all Nigeria Anglican Communion, I want to call on the old girls of Queen's College to take their school anthem. But please, it's going to be the first and the last stanzas. Old girls of Queen's College.
We can do better than that. Good afternoon to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you all to this funeral service and on behalf of our Father in the Lord, the head of our national church, our primate, we say welcome, God bless you all to our Savior's church. TBS, and we commiserate with Mr. Yinka Fisher, Lanre, and Deji, the family of Amakre, and our dear former primate, the Most Reverend Dr. Peter Jasper Akiola, former primate, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, and the de facto head of the family of Fisher. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome our dear father, the most reverend Dr. Henry Ndukuba, Archbishop, Metropolitan, and Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Papa, we welcome you to your diocese and to your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. We also welcome the Right Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Adekunle, Bishop of Egba Diocese. Thank you for coming, sir. We welcome the Right Reverend Dr. James Olushola Odedeji, the Bishop of Lagos West. You are welcome, sir. And our dear daddy that preached the gospel is the right Reverend Oluroti Odubogun, the retired bishop of Ife Diocese. Papa, you are welcome, sir. And we welcome Mama. Mama is among the congregation. Mama, you are welcome. God bless you again and again in Jesus' name. I'm also taking the permission from our dear father, the most reverend doctor, Henry Ndukuba, to allow the vicar of this church to do the remaining um, notices. But before then, we recognize the GAFCON Fundraising Committee members. GAFCON Fundraising Committee members, can you please wave wherever you are I can see Baba Cole, Dr. Madhu, Mr. Fisher himself, and um, I think I saw Prince the other time. Thank you very, very much because we are families and um, God has been helping us. You are all welcome. Thank you, my Lord. Um, in the name of Christ and standing on the already established protocols, we want to thank God for the life and times of our sister and our mother, Dr. Doris Daba Fisher. We know the Lord is able to take care of the family, and we pray that the Lord himself will continue to glorify himself in your lives, in Jesus' name. We want to appreciate our Dalsizan himself, having appreciated all our fathers in God on my behalf. Baba, we appreciate you for being part of this service and for welcoming uh, Papa Primate, His Lordship, the Right Reverend Dr. Ifedola Senasu Gabriel Okupevi, uh, Distinguished Fellow, Academy of Theology of Emmanuel College of Theology. Thank you, my Lord. We pray that the Lord will continue to renew your strengths 
in the name of Jesus. Uh, your grace, permit me to welcome your chancellor, uh, Mr. Henry Ordain Ajumo Gobia, S-A-N, the chancellor of Church of Nigeria, with his wife, and others who are in this service. Uh, your grace, I also want to let you know that we have many organists in this church, and one of them is um, the ambassador, Her Excellency, uh, former ambassador to Greece, uh, Ambassador Okunemi Akinkube, who, of course, you know very well. And on that note, I want to appreciate the choir and the organist led by the choir master, Mr. Theophilus Okank, and all those who have made this service very, very successful. Uh, I will not forget to appreciate the admin office led by Mr. Uncle Mike Ipadiola and other members of the admin office of our Savior's Church. Of course, the Guild of Stewards, we appreciate you. We pray the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in God's service in the name of Jesus. On behalf of Fisher Family and Amikre, we welcome Her Excellency, the First Lady of Lagos State, uh, Dr. Ibijoke Sonwolu. You are most welcome, huh? We pray the Lord will continue to bless you. Uh, Excellency, the First Lady of Ogun State, Mrs. Bamindele Abiodun, most welcome, huh? An immediate past First Lady of Akwaibom State, Her Excellency Martha Udom Emmanuel, former Governor of River State, His Excellency Mr. Rotimi Amechi, former Governor of Cross River State, and wife, His Excellency Donald Honorary Duke, and former Governor of Oshun State, His Excellency um, Aregbe Shola. The wife of the Deputy Governor of Edo State, we welcome you. Mrs. Omobayo Emoke, and all of you for being here to support the family. We pray that the glory of God will never depart from your lives and homes and families in Jesus' name. I thought you wanted to say a better amen. Thank you for doing so eventually. Uh, we want to appreciate the team of clergy uh, from both within this church and from outside this parish. We have a notice from the family that please go straight to the venue of the reception after now, after the service. We thank God and we pray that God will grant all of us the grace to end well and finish strong. And when it is our turn, we will be with others at the feet of Christ, rejoicing with angels and forever and ever, in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you. I invite Baba. The Lord be with you. Fathers in God and your excellencies, we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is a day very special to two families, the family of Amakri and the family of Fisher, as we celebrate a life well spent by our sister, mother, and daughter, Doris, who gave her life to serve humanity with compassion not only as a medical doctor, but also as a servant of our fatherland in different capacities. And we thank God that this life was lived to the fullest. And she also honored God and served him in the midst of his people. And that's why all of us are here. to celebrate this life and to bid her a farewell. This is a divine appointment that will come to every one of us. If it were possible for science to find solution to death, it would have been solved. 
If it would have been by human philosophy, it would have been solved. If it would have been bought over by money or with money, or science and technology, I know that there may be some investors that will want to invest in this. But just as our Father in God brought the word, the beginning, right at the beginning of his message, he brought out the word from Hebrews 9.27. It is divine appointments. The question I always ask myself, if this is Henry, where will I be? Will I be in the bosom of the Lord? Taking the due rest, resting from my labors. Or will I be in the place of damnation? My prayer is that we will take time to reflect on our eternal destiny. Some of us have prepared, written our wills, have taken out life insurance, and have made preparations. But unfortunately, some of us have not made any preparation for a day like this. And as our Father in God brought that word. He invited us to make up our mind. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When we believe and turn to the Lord, even that simple faith, as he concluded, today can be a day of salvation and of eternal hope. And I pray that we will respond to God. We want to encourage our brothers to stand strong. Please take care of Baba. That's the man you have now. Mama is gone. Take care of him. You are all he has. And don't disappoint him. Remain one. Both of you. Remain in love. Be united. And those legacies you have seen of Baba and Mama, keep them. That's the way you will honor them. They have lived to serve others and serve God. Vibrant in faith, yet successful in life. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and your children and your children's children. Let not this fire which your parents have passed on to you, let it not quench. Keep it alive. Keep it burning. Serve God. The life that is impacting on others is the life that will ever be remembered. And as we have come here safely as you go, the Lord will take you home safely. The hand of the Lord will be upon us. We will not die before our time. We will fulfill God's purpose in our lives. And at the end, we shall not only be celebrated here, but we shall meet at the feet of the Lord. God bless you.
The Lord be with you. Come with me to page 15 and let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you for all people are made in your image and reflect your truth and life. We thank you for the life of your daughter, Doris, for the love and mercy she received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, you may we may share with our sister that clear vision when we shall see your face in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us with your servant Doris and all the faithful departed the sure benefit of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection. That in the last day, when you gather all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, particularly Lanre Deji and the grandchildren, that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, be merciful to all travelers, especially those who have traveled from far and near places to commiserate with the bereaved and grant them a safe return. Bless guide and defend them, protect them from all perils and dangers of the road, prosper them in their cause, that they beholding your mercy and praising you for your goodness, here may the more be quickened with a desire for the full enjoyment of their privileges as fellow citizens with all the saints in your heavenly household. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and evening comes and the busy world 
is hushed. The fever of life is over. And our work done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at last. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please remain standing. I will take recommendation now. Page 21. Doris. Our dear sister in Christ, go forth 
upon your journey from this world. In the name of God the Father, Almighty, who created you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who suffered for you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies you. And may your rest be in peace and your dwelling in the paradise of the people of God.